Hello, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back. I just need you to know what the background noise is gonna be. Must destroy. She kills these these toys in about five minutes and they cost like five dollars. So it's like a dollar a minute for my puppy dog to have fun, but we keep humoring her because she's just so damn cute. I talk a decent amount on this channel about mental health and I've mentioned more than once how I deal with depression and anxiety and PTSD and some days are better than others. And on the days that are good, I look back on the days that are bad and I'm like, what was I thinking? What was I feeling? Like, that's so extreme, that's so severe. Like, why would I think or feel those things? Cause I'm fine. And then the next day comes around and the world is a dark, hopeless place that I cannot breathe in, that I'm suffocating in. It's a bizarre roller coaster to ride, but it's the one that I'm currently strapped into and I haven't found a way to exit this ride just yet, so here we are. But I wanna talk about the one thought, there's one very specific thought that wrecks me, that brings me into so much darkness quicker than anything else. And I think it's something that many of us who've experienced such things have felt and so I'd like to share it with you in the hopes that maybe you know that you aren't alone if you felt this way. What is this invasion? We talked about this. We talked about the fact that mommy's filming and when mommy's filming, uh, puppies should make more noise than usual. That seems to be the message they got out of the conversation that we had this week. This is gonna be a little bit of a convoluted story, but stick with me. Earlier this week, my second channel called Trauma Talk got monetized, which is really cool because it's been uh, two and a half years of really hard work to get there and I'm really proud of the 3,500 subscribers I have over there, even though this channel is more successful in quotes, whatever success means to different people. And you YouTube. As I was going back through all of the videos that I have on Trauma Talk, uh, you have to like individually monetize them, right? And I came across one from like a year and a half ago where I was saying things that I'm saying now, that I feel now. Fear that it will never change, that I'm always going to feel this way no matter what I do. The feeling of feeling so alien and so different from other people, even though I think I'm very skilled at fitting in, I'm very skilled at being around people and it acting like I'm normal and okay. And I listened to me speak in that video. I think it was actually closer to like two years ago that I recorded that video. And it just sent my heart plummeting to the floor because I was like, oh, oh fuck. That was two years ago and I have put in a significant amount of work since then. Um, I've gone to a lot of counseling. I've done good things for my mental health since then and I feel exactly the same, if not worse. And that's the thought that will wreck me. That is the thought that will push me towards the edge faster than anything on this planet, is this feeling, this thought, or this, what I feel like is a knowledge suddenly in some moments that things will never change. That it's always gonna feel like this no matter what I try. And if you aren't someone who's dealt with depression in particular, what I mean by feeling like this is just this constant disconnection, this constant pain. It's like physical pain as well as emotional pain while also being completely numb. It's a literal minute by minute struggle to try to be a person, to try to do anything. I'm very aware of what I need to do, what I wanna do, what I should do or shouldn't do or you know whatever, but it's so impossible to do those things. It's so difficult to find motivation or to find words or stability is such a fleeting thought. It seems like a sick joke. And I know that I mentioned this in a video before where I talked about depression, but when I'm in these places, looking into the future and picturing my perfect reality, like where everything that I want, that I'm working for comes true, I lose the ability to imagine a world in which I feel differently. Right now, sitting here, I can imagine everything that I want. I can imagine living on, yay, emotions. I can imagine living on a you know, hundred acres somewhere in the mountains maybe with a couple horses and all the rescue dogs that need homes and chickens and my husband and being able to travel to give speeches about what I really really passionately care about and hopefully affect change and help people feel less alone and um, write, have good friendships and I imagine those continuing. I can see that. It's not a lack of seeing the future, but when I see that, 
When I picture myself on the stages that I'm working hard to get on. When I picture myself sitting in a cute little farmhouse. She literally always knows when I'm not okay. Look at this beautiful present that she's brought me. <laughs> she's like, no, it's not actually for you, mommy. She just wants to help. I'm okay. Don't spill the coffee. When I picture myself sitting in a farmhouse, drinking coffee with these little monsters and looking out over a, a peaceful landscape. Places like that, like they bring me such a sense of peace. I can't imagine the rock in my chest being gone. Like in my perfect reality, I can't imagine a way to shake it. I am so sincerely terrified it will never change. And I've been aware of mental health and the desperate need in my life to pay attention to it. I've been aware of the fact that I've gone through significant trauma and I need to work through it to make it. I've been aware of the things that help and the things that hurt and how to move forward and how to be, you know, um, I've been, I've been aware for about eight years now. I've been on a journey of trying to put myself back together. And I think it's less putting myself back together, but trying to create a reality that I can exist in for eight years. And so many things have changed. So many things have gotten better, especially when it comes to PTSD, which was is agonizing, but it's gotten much more bearable. Like I've learned so many coping skills. Symptoms are better. They don't last as long, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I still feel like I'm bleeding out inside. And when that thought hits of it's never going to change, I'm always going to feel like this. That is when all of the doors start shutting in my mind when I get to dangerous mental places. And what I'm going to say next is for me. If it resonates with you, good. If it doesn't, just leave it. I'm not giving it as like advice, right? It's just something that hit me this week and it's been helping me. There's a song by my favorite artist, Louis Capaldi, that was just released that is called Before You Go. And if you listen to it, it could be a breakup song, but I sincerely think it's a song about someone who has lost their life to suicide. I think it's a song to a friend, like before you go. The lyrics are things like, was there something that I could have said to make it all stop hurting? It kills me how your mind can make you feel so worthless. Because I spend so much time thinking about all of this, not from just a personal perspective, but as someone who's very passionate about improving mental health, across our country, across our world. Um, it's something that brings me joy when I'm not actively suffering under the weight of it. I think sometimes I, th I think that I know all the things to try or I know all the possible answers. Um, with so much information readily available, it's easy to Google things and be like, here are the things you should try or here are the things that you should do that work or you know, fill in the blank. And I've tried so many of them that I think sometimes I get really arrogant in thinking that I know the answers for myself or I know the things that I should try and I know the things that would work and I know the things that wouldn't work even if I haven't tried them. And what hit me after listening to this song for whatever reason was that I haven't heard all the combinations of words that someone could say to me. Not that words fix things, but I, I haven't done that. Songs like the one I'm talking about have often influenced my healing in a significant way. I haven't listened to every song that's ever been written that could do something. I read a lot of books on this kind of stuff. I haven't come close to tapping the surface of all the material that's out there to read. I have traveled to all of two foreign countries of the well over a hundred that exist on our planet. I haven't drawn all the pictures in the world. I haven't tried all the colors of paint that I could find. I haven't sung in front of an audience and embraced one of my biggest fears. I haven't listened and engaged with everyone's story in the world. Not that anyone ever could. But I guess what I'm trying to say is in those moments when I get to those incredibly dark, dangerous places where I'm like, it's never gonna change. It's literally never gonna change. I'm never gonna find a way to dig this rock out of my chest. I've tried for like, you know, eight years now. And yeah, some things have changed, but it hasn't really, it hasn't really shifted. And clearly I've uh, tried so many things. That I know everything, right? No, I don't. And I feel like an abbreviated form of this advice is sometimes what people throw at you when you say that you're struggling with suicidal thoughts or that you're having a hard time. They're like, well, you haven't tried everything. And that's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm just saying that for me, it really hit me today and, and this week that this world is such a huge place. It is huge. It is vast. There are 
endless possibilities, especially in the day and age that we live in. For instance, when I, when I traveled to Ireland, there's a place called um, Kenmare Bay. At the edge of the Kenmar River, it's technically a bay. The damn English apparently messed that up. But uh, I'm hoping to see a seal or an otter. I think I slept in too late for that. But regardless, this is... I feel like I should stop talking because it, it's beautiful and peaceful and quiet and perfect. And I stood at the water, surrounded by nature and silence, and for the first time in, oh, I don't know, maybe a decade, I felt at rest. And I, I wouldn't have felt that if I hadn't traveled there then. I'm really curious how loud my dog's um, chewing is gonna be on camera. <laughs> it's puppy ASMR, maybe? That's what we're gonna classify it as. I have no idea what my future looks like and I don't want to rob myself of that. You don't know what your future looks like, as sure as we often are that we do. Don't rob yourself of that either. There are so many ways to find purpose. There are so many ways to find healing from the things that we're suffering from and hurting from. I'm tired of trying. I'm tired of looking. I'm tired. But when we're tired, we're allowed to rest. Being tired doesn't mean you have to throw in the towel and give up and be like, well, it's never ever gonna change because, because I'm exhausted from trying. If you've ever had that thought, that horrifying thought of sincerely, what if it never changes? And when that starts to feel true, that it's never gonna change, I would really encourage you to do something to help yourself find a way out of that thought. Because I know that in my own life, that's brought me to more dangerous places than anything else whether that's talking to someone who understands, whether that's trying something, whether that's journaling or singing or screaming or sobbing or taking a day away from society or taking a day to completely engage in society, whatever it is, change is very, very possible. In fact, I'm pretty sure that there is a line that people say that I can't remember the exact words of that goes something like, the only thing we can know for certain is that things will always change. We don't stay static, our bodies don't stay static, the world doesn't stay static, things are constantly moving and changing. And sometimes that in itself is overwhelming to think about, but in the moments that I am overwhelmed by the idea that this will never change, I will always feel this way. I'm gonna continue to remind myself that I'm wrong. I'm gonna continue to remind myself that I live in a very small piece of the world. I've tried a few things, I haven't tried everything not even freaking close. It is a really big world out there. As hard as humans have tried, we can't know the future for better or worse. And I will continue to choose to believe that there is a possibility that this rock in my chest that hurts and never seems to move will one day shift. I believe the same is true for you too. If this is something that you are dealing with, if this is something you have felt. Sophie believes it too. She told me so herself with her little cute little eyeballs. And now, uh, which is very fitting, I'm gonna head off to counseling to talk about some of this stuff with a professional who can guide me through this better than I can ever hope to do so myself. This isn't exactly the best video to introduce it in, but um, I do have a race going on with my friend, Aaron, from Life of Paulos. I need to get to 200,000 subscribers before he gets to 250,000 subscribers. Otherwise, we have to bring him and his wife out to dinner. Um, but I want them to pay for our dinner. So if you wanna subscribe to my channel and help me win these high stakes prizes, I would love it if you'd consider doing that. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you to my patrons who help me in so many more ways than one. I love you guys, I'm thinking of you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Have her from